My name is Harry Forbes. I'm from ARC Advisor Group in Boston. Uh, welcome to our session on Ethernet and I Internet Protocol for field devices. Um, let me just introduce uh, kind of the go over the format for this session. Um, I'm going to give a very brief introduction just on the um, uh, uh, just to kind of raise, raise the bar a little bit and define some terms. And we're going to have a uh, presentation, which will actually be a joint presentation by uh, an end user and a supplier. The supplier is um, uh, Dr. Cagle, who's the CEO of, of P&F. And uh, the end user is Dr. Uh, Michael Kraus from BASF. Um, so um, without further ado, I'm going to begin. Um, I'd, I'd like to, first of all, just kind of um, discuss what the state of the, the installed base and the process industries is from ARC's view. We have done uh, research for many, many years. And I would say in terms of the um, uh, networks, uh, it's a fairly static model right now. Uh, in terms of the installed base, the number of installed field devices worldwide is a good question because they don't easily identify themselves. But our estimates are that it's, 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 certainly it's in the order of n times 10 to the seventh devices. Um, roughly a 70 million would be my guess. Um, about 80% of these devices use the HART protocol, which is a protocol developed 30 years ago. And, uh, enhanced somewhat since then, enhanced incrementally since then. Another, uh, probably the second largest chunk, use either the field bus, uh, foundation, foundation field bus H1 or Profibus P8. Both of these use a physical layer that is from the 90s and also is a low data rate of about 31 KB. So, but you notice from the trend that, that uh, nothing really is changing very rapidly. There is, a, there is a small subset of the market that has adopted the field bus technologies. Um, it's not uh, come to dominate the market. And really, the technical innovation has been relatively slow in terms, uh, relatively non existent in terms of the protocols used. And all the devices really support only one protocol, which is a point I'll get to in a second. Now, I want to define a couple of things just to kind of raise the um, uh, level of awareness and make sure, because the networking, if you don't live in the networking world, you have a lot of terms that network nerds use that are almost like the theological terms. They mean very specific things when you say them. And physical layer is one of those things. So I want to define kind of what we mean by a physical layer. And then I want to define what we mean by Ethernet. Well, a physical layer in the heart system is defined as a, uh, a modulated signal on top of a DC signal, which is the 4 to 20 milliamp signal used. So that term physical layer refers to the, um, the lowest layer of a model. We, familiarly called the OSI communications model. So this is a model of networking communication. The heart protocol, in terms of uh, its age being so old, many of the uh, academics who are first exposed to this type of industrial protocol, to me, called it a 127 protocol, which means there's an application layer, uh, and then there's, there's a physical layer and a data link layer, and that's it. Um, the intermediate layers really add value in terms of scalability, in terms of quality of service, and other attributes that the, the protocols of, the, the, of that era really lack. So there is value to be added in having the extra layers in the protocol in terms of uh, technological capability. But we see that term at the bottom, physical layer. So let me go in. And, and just define a little bit what the physical layer of the OSI model really means. The physical layer, or the phi as people call it, specifies things like what kind of communication media you are going to use. That can be copper, it can be 
optical fiber, single mold, multi mold opt optical fiber. It can be plastic optical fiber. It can be radio waves in uh, the in the air. It can be light optical uh, uh, visible spectrum in the air. Being and and it also defines the uh, the kinds of geometries and connectors that will be employed, the limitations on those geometries, such as the length of particular runs. All of that, the types of connectors all specified very clearly in a physical layer specification. So this is really a combination of perhaps electrical, optical, uh, and mechanical properties of a communications medium. Also specifying the signal properties, the type of signaling that's used, the frequencies that are used for carriers if there's modulation, the types of modulation, how it will be channeled, if there will be specific channels for communication, and the types of modulation that will be used. All very complex kind of definitions of what the physical medium will be for communication. And that's the lowest, that's the lowest layer in a nutshell. That is the physical layer. And everyone who works with Ethernet knows that Ethernet has a physical layer that looks like this. Oh, wait a minute. That was what the Ethernet physical layer looked like in the 80s, if, you can, if you're old enough to recall. Uh, that was one of the common physical layers in the 80s. Nowadays, if you ask people what Ethernet looks like, they'll say, oh, it looks like that. Well, actually, this is an important point. There are multiple physical layer specifications for networks. And in the case of Ethernet, there are over 50. Um, each one of these, and this is not an exhaustive list, is a different physical layer specification that is, in most cases, standardized by um, an organization called IEEE 802.3, um, which standardizes a lot of networking technologies. But the point is here, there are 50 different physical layers. Now, these will have different mediums. They'll have different data rates. They'll have some of these represent technical evolution from the 19, late 1980s, when the first of these were developed, to the present time. Some of them represent different applications, some, such as telecommunications or uh, data centers and so forth. So there's a, an abundance of different, distinct, yet standardized and interoperable physical layers. Well, they're not un interoperable at the physical layer itself, but what is Ethernet then? That's really my second question. What is Ethernet if, if there are 50 different physical layers for Ethernet? In effect, there is really only one data link layer. So if you go up a layer in the stack, in the model, what Ethernet really is, is it is the any network that can use an IEEE 802.3 data link layer. So when you communicate with that data link layer above the physical layer, you are happily unaware of what the physical limitations and the physical implementation is below. So when we talk about an advanced physical layer, or uh, the panelists here talk about an advanced physical layer, we're talking about using a, an existing or creating a new physical layer to uh, communicate with field devices in the process industries. Now, there would certainly be major benefits in, in ARC's view of adopting uh, a more powerful network for the, phys for, the, uh, for the process field. First of all, would be better tools for device configuration and management. In ARC's view, we have found a lot of end users having to struggle very much with managing devices, particularly as the uh, technologies change and also as the devices, uh, the scale of their plants grows. Uh, it's it's a, been a pain point we find for many, many end users. Device data visibility is another plus. Um, and the much higher data rates, I think, will enable uh, much more activity, much more um, inter interaction with field devices. And finally, multiple protocols. This is a characteristic of, e of that layered architecture. Remember that the hard had a 127 protocol. Um, Real Ethernet devices can support multiple protocols, some of them for data communication, some of them for management, and some of them for uh, different applications. So it's a multi-protocol device, which would offer a great deal of, of 
improvement over the present situation. Now, some of the challenges, and again, I think the panelists will talk about this more than I will and have probably forgotten more about it than I know, but certainly the big challenges here are they must be able to use uh, most existing field wiring because end users are deeply invested in the wiring and the cost of replacing wiring is so high that the installed wiring has to be suitable for any new physical medium that would be used or communication that would be used. It will require some form of international standardization, um, in my opinion, preferably by IEEE 802.3, but that's a point of discussion. Um, the migration to that new technology has to be gradual, like all our migrations. It has to be gradual. There has to be a path to get from A to B because it is not going to be a successful technology if it can only be deployed in greenfield projects. And finally, the new devices, the new physical layer has to be secure. And much of the device security that we have tends to come from the difficulty and, uh, and slow rate of communication that we have for devices. They're either inaccessible or even if they are accessible, the level of communication is very little. If you put a network out to such devices, they will become essentially part of a powerful network, and they have to be secure because they are a potential point of attack. And I just wanted to point out also that um, in industries and applications where the existing Ethernet physical layers can be used, um, particularly industries, vertical industries such as food and beverage, um, which are, don't have necessarily the same kind of hazardous environments as you will find in hydrocarbon processing industries, for instance, that certain uh, suppliers have already begun to, do, to commercialize and sell devices with an existing Ethernet physical layer, and this is just one example. Now, for, for many reasons that the uh, panelists will talk about, um, those kind of solutions are not broadly acceptable. What, what we are looking for really is a solution, that, a single solution that will be very, very broadly acceptable within the process industries, including the hydrocarbon processing industries. <clears throat> 